Sure. So, I mean, Post Malone for me, someone I've been following for quite a while now. Um, actually, the, since the second record. Um, in those first three records that he did, uh, Stoney, Beer Bongs and Bentleys, and Hollywood's Bleeding, incredible run of three records. Uh, the last album, though, that one, not so much for me. So going into this one, I was not sure what to expect. I really didn't like pretty much almost all of that last album he did was not not what I was expecting from him, not where I wanted him to go. So I was kind of worried going into this one that would get more of the same, considering it, it was pushed out a, actually only a year after the first one, almost exactly a year, I think. But that's really not what we got. We got a more... Uh, personal record a more kind of stripped down record so this this album goes more into those like singer songwriter type acoustic um almost at times like pop rock like soft rock vibes more than the hip-hop i mean that the hip-hop aspect from most of this is almost completely stripped away other than occasional beats here and there and then a couple of tracks scattered in in and out for those fans but really what this reminded me of was a like 2000s like pop rock album from like one of those bands you'd hear on the radio back in the like early to mid 2000s and that's definitely not a bad thing um i'm glad that i gave this album time to set in because when i first listened to it it really didn't do anything for me but then after more listens i realized i really like this one specifically i noticed that if you listen to this I highly recommend you do it with good speakers. If you listen to it through the phone, you're going to miss a lot. Even if you listen to it through like a standard car speaker, I found myself missing a lot. But when I listen to it through my like really good quality headphones, I realized there's a lot of like intricate things here and there that I really missed on first listen throughs. So like uh, specifically the bass on here. I don't know who is playing bass on it. I don't know if it's the producer or what. But there's really, really good bass grooves throughout this whole thing. Uh, and that was really something I didn't catch up with. Like, it didn't catch up with me until I listened through those good headphones. And I feel like that added so much for me on like the experience listening through. So, I mean, if you want to get into the track list, JT, if you want to pull that up. This, I'm going to be honest with you. It, it's full of a lot of 10s and 9s for me on this record. Um, didn't expect it, especially on first listen through. But man, I have been listening to this nonstop for a while. Uh, even the first track, Don't Understand, which at first I was kind of split on this one because I was like, I it's a good song. It's this one right away. It's an eight for me for this track. But at first, I didn't really know how I felt about it, especially as the album opener. Because it, it feels more like it should be a closer or like a mid-album interlude. It really just sounds like a well-produced home demo. It feels very personal. I do love the lyrics on it. Um, I feel like there was some really good ideas on here that could have been flushed out even more to bring that score up even more. Right after that, though, we get into what is my least favorite song on the album. And here's where I started to worry a little bit with something real being this like huge anthemic sound which is cool at first i'm like oh this is cool where's this gonna go it goes nowhere it stays at that same thing repeating the chorus over and over with the huge like gospel choir in there which again on first use is cool if you found different ways to use it throughout i'd like it even more so this one went down to a six for me uh, kind of this one kind of merged like all the sounds he was going for into one didn't work to the best chemical totally get why it was one of the singles I believe is the first single uh, really kind of sets the tone for the album in more of a radio friendly way than most of the tracks do uh, it's a nine it's not perfect but it's a really good radio jam um, Nova Candy another nine right here this is where the album really started to pick up Great chorus on this. The verse has a great flow. Um, I do wish that the synth ending there kind of led to something else. Uh, I kind of thought it was going to go into a bridge. I wasn't looking at how long the track was. And that synth ending, the synth ending started coming up. I was like, all right, where's this going to go from here? 
thinking that was just the bridge of the track and it just kind of ended. So that kind of brought down for me. And then we get to my favorite track of the album, Morning. Best track on the album, best track so far. The chorus, incredible, super catchy. Uh, kind of has more of that classic Post Malone sound. Uh, lyrics are clever. I enjoy it. Uh, honestly, one of my favorite songs of the year so far. Then we take a slight dip down with Too Cool to Die. Again, really good chorus. The verses aren't anything special. kind of drags it down. And that's something that I've noticed throughout the album itself is that when there's sometimes the songs suffer from it having a really good chorus and the verses just kind of going nowhere, feeling like filler. Uh, it's an eight. I really like it. Has like a chill, laid back, summery vibe to it. And then we get to the best run of songs on the album for me, with "Sign Me Up," "Socialite," "Overdrive," "Speedometer," and "Hold My Breath" all being tens for me. This run was so good. This is probably my favorite run of tracks on a Post Malone album. Uh, "Sign Me Up" being that '80s synth wave inspired thing. Would love more of the sound from him, which we do get later on in the album as well. I kind of hope he continues with this later in his career as well. But this is one of those tracks where I first started to really pick up on that really cool like bass groove going on. It has changes throughout the track the, with the bridge and everything. Has all the instruments you want. Piano, synth, bass, guitar, drums. All things that I didn't really fully expect to get on this album. I kind of expected it to follow more in line with his last album, which was more on that hip hop type vibe that I just really wasn't into. Then second best track on here that has the best lyric of the album, mm -hmm. the song Socialite. This one best showcases how good his voice is. It's lyrically fantastic. It's a really what it is, a modern 2000s rock ballad. But most importantly, it has the best line of the record, which is I'm calling her Shrek. She got a donkey. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Perfect. Incredible. So that one really blew me away. That that and morning are like the two best. Overdrive, really like that one again with that like 2000s rock vibe. But it also has an orchestra going in the back. That's a really nice touch. It's simple. It's not overdone. It's not in your face. It's very good speedometer bringing back that 80s synth pop um like lean in sounds lyrically pretty much what you'd expect nothing too special great groovy bass line again chorus is super chill and that's like i can say about this whole album this whole album is really meant to just relax to like i can just chill out and relax to this one put it on and just enjoy myself then hold my breath this one was the biggest uh, stand out to me in terms of when I first heard this one I hated it when I first heard this his voice on it was so brutal to my ears because he does he has this habit on the past two records of doing this these like high notes that his voice really doesn't do well in at least in my opinion I don't like when he does that he has a great voice when he stays in his range but the more I listen to this song the more and more I enjoyed it until I realized, oh, crap, this is an incredible track. The highs still bother me a little bit, but instrumentally, it's so good. The way it picks up halfway through, I could totally picture this being like a like a deep voice, like crooner, like a Frank Sinatra singing over this. Totally has that vibe instrumentally. It's really yeah, raw and emotional mean his track. You mean his uh, range or the auto tune that he's using in a lot of these songs? Well, range? That's I mean, I'm not sure but which he, one you're He's a great about. singer either way. Yes. He's well, a great singer. Yeah, yeah. You hear him sing without it too. That's just, you know, a byproduct of the genre. I mean, even most, most of the artists that we talk about on this channel have after effects on their voice. It's just something that's, you know, happens. But the, I will say about the auto tune is. The times you notice the most is when he does the high notes and all that. Mm -hmm. The times he really needs it. And that's what bothers me about it. When he's using his normal range and his normal voice, it's not really noticeable. But once he tries to go into that like upper register, it just doesn't work. Um, then enough is enough. 
slight dip but still a nine for me i really like this one i didn't expect the drop into the course and i really like that uh at times i got like total like u2 vibes on here a uh, little bit of elton john in there as well once it kicks in it's great uh the one line on this has the worst vocal line on the record where i uh, the line leading into the chorus where he says it really ain't funny the way he does that high pitch voice is terrible doesn't sound good uh then we go into the album takes a bit of a dip here for the next few texas t uh buyer beware and landmine they're all eights for me for pretty much similar reasons but texas t is the most by far the most hip-hop inspired track here by far uh, it has a good beat behind it i wish it went more places i could see it being like a fun club song like when you're out at like a night at the bar or whatever Totally work for that. Nothing too special. Buyer Beware. Cool Johnny Cash sounding intro that turns into an 80s synthwave track throughout. Uh, excellent bass tone groove. Fun track. Not as good as some of the others. Same thing with Landmine. Good track. Just not as good. Doesn't hold up to some of the others on here. But then we finish the album off with a bang here. Green Thumb. Love the guitar on this one has a total like Beatlesque vibe to it. Uh, storytelling at one of his best on this one, something that I feel like we don't really get a lot from him because I feel like even on some of these more acoustic singer-songwriter tracks, he does fall into the tropes of the hip-hop lyrics to the point where in some tracks, I don't think it necessarily fits the vibe of this track. This one gets away from that and it, it's perfect. His you know emotional songs are always do very well. And then laugh it off. This one had some really cool harmonies on it that I wish he did more in his music. I feel like we don't get that a lot from him. Um, extremely well done. Very enjoyable track. The way it builds instrumentally and then culminating in that uh, big bombastic ending at the end. I uh, would love more of that from him. I've been wanting high energy music like that from him since 2020 when we saw him do that uh, Nirvana covers set on YouTube during a COVID lockdown would love more of that. I hope that this kind of soft pop rock album, maybe it'll evolve to his next album being a little more hard rock or something. That'd be cool. But I mean, overall album as a whole is a straight nine for me. Uh, I love this album. Uh, so far album of the year by far. Uh, first album of the year that I've listened to that I've actually thoroughly, really, really liked. 